Hi, my name is Medius from Cloud9, and this is my analysis of OMG vs EDG. For OMG vs EDG, OMG had blue side, so they banned out champions that they didn't necessarily want to first pick, but they also didn't want the other team to have, so Echo, Annie, and Hecarim basically pretty hard engaged champions. And EDG returned by banning Callisto, which is a normal purple side ban, especially in China and Korea. They almost never want to give up Callisto first pick. They banned Nautilus and then Sivir. Usually, you see Callisto and Sivir bans go together because they're the top two AD carries right now. So with all those banned, it sort of left both junglers up, which are Rek'Sai and Gragas, so the teams would do a trade for those. And then Alistair is the other blatantly OP champion up, so OMG first picked it, which is pretty standard. And then EDG countered with Maokai and Corky, which is kind of interesting because Rise wasn't banned or first picked or even taken the second rotation for EDG. So I guess EDG values having Maokai into Rise rather than having the Rise, so they think that they can really handle it. OMG responds by taking Rek'Sai and Rise, which is also kind of interesting because I feel like a lot of teams, and personally I feel like Gragas is stronger than Rek'Sai, so I guess OMG just prefers playing Rek'Sai over the Gragas because they took Rek'Sai with both being up, and then they took back the Rise. So OMG's comp looks pretty strong after the first three picks, having Alistair and Rise with a strong early game jungler. EDG responds with Braum, which is not a support you see too often. I guess it was specifically for the Rise counter pick is what I have to imagine because you can block like all of his Qs. And then they took Gragas, which is the other jungler, allowing them to last pick mid. OMG responds with Graves, Cassio. So OMG is a really solid comp. They're pretty much all these tanky CC high damage champions, which is what you want. They have pretty good lanes. Usually in any game with a Rise, there's going to be a lot of focus in the top lane because one team's going to want to camp him and the Rise team is going to want to not have him get camped. So I expect to see a lot of ganks top, and it looks like EDG last picks Azir, who is a strong mid laner. I think the Cassio versus Azir matchup is pretty close. I don't play mid, but both champs are pretty good. EDG's comp is a little magic he heavy for my liking. Usually I think Corky is best with either an AD jungler and top, or like mid and top. Usually two other ADs elsewhere, so that they can't easily stack MR. You get a lot of value out of his rocket poke, so I like OMG's comp better in this game. Especially because they have Ryze and Alistair, so it's my thoughts on the draft. Leading up to this clip, OMG has TP advantage because Maokai used his previously and Ryze still has his, so they try to have Ryze stay bot and push it in so that they can make a TP play top. Because they know that they have this TP advantage, they had their duo lane push top tower and get really aggressive because they knew they could have Ryze TP in. Recognizing this, EDG has Maokai rotate up from bot, which allows Ryze to push and farm, but in exchange, they had Maokai and Azir both push in mid, which pins Cassiopeia at her turret, and then they both go t uh, towards top lane. They did this so they could outnumber OMG, who was playing pretty aggressively since they were strong up there. Graves pushes Corky out, gets him pretty low, they take the turret, but they weren't really noticing, I guess, that mid lane would roam up like that. So they felt safe because they had TP, the other team didn't, but they ended up getting caught pretty hard because they just got outnumbered anyway, due to the mid lane roam. When OMG was in this situation, what they had to do here was not pressure top. Even though they had the TP advantage, it was actually unsafe for them to do it because Maokai roamed up and pushed through mid. So they could have allowed Ryze more time to push bot to make it so Maokai actually lost something if he left lane. They tried to pin him down at that bot lane, but they tried making the play too quickly and Maokai was able to push through mid and get top before Ryze was able to get bot pushed into the turret. So OMG basically just had to be a little bit more patient and not commit everyone top like that when they knew they could be pressured in mid and not have support from Cassiopeia. At this point in the game, EDG was very ahead, and they are about to take their third dragon. Their dragon's pretty big because it gives move speed and allows your team very easy initiation, just because it's basically like having a full page of move speed quints on every single champion. So, OMG didn't want to give up that third dragon for nothing. They didn't feel they could get it going elsewhere, so they just decided to fight it. Sometimes when you're behind, you just have your back up against the wall and feel like you gotta go for something. And so they tried to do the fight, they were super behind and it went kinda like expected, they got blasted. Alternatively they could have went top, taking control top instead of fighting the dragon. But eventually you're gonna have to fight the other team and they felt this was their best bet. For this clip, EDG is sieging bot with about a 10k gold lead so they're very ahead. Def gets a little too aggressive and EDG doesn't watch their positioning and they get 5 man Alistair pulverized into a Cassiopeia ult, but they have a good disengage with Azir ult and Gragas ult knocking Cassiopeia away, and just mostly due to their gold advantage, they're able to still win the fight despite getting initiated on so badly. For this clip, 
EDG is extremely far ahead and they're going for Baron. OMG decides they have to contest it because if they give up Baron, they'll probably lose. And Maokai was way too far up, standing near a race instead of in the pit with the rest of its team. So OMG is able to pick him off with just the crazy damage they have on their team from Ryze and everyone else. So they kill Maokai while EDG takes Baron. And then they're able to win the fight because it's basically a 4v5 even though the other team has Baron. They're able to kite EDG into a choke and then get a really nice smoke bomb on Azir when he tries to come in to poke them. So they basically render Azir pretty useless for that fight after already being a 4v5. And so they're able to win it pretty handedly with just the sustained damage from Ryze, Cassiopeia, and Graves from a team that's chasing them into a choke. I think that for this game, the biggest thing that went wrong for EDG is the fact that they gave up Ryze and then picked a pretty imbalanced team comp in the sense that their entire team does magic damage, so what that does is it allows the other team to itemize really effectively against you. Pretty much all of their members picked up Merc Treads, and it just makes it so their CC is not very effective, they all do less damage due to how easy to stack MR, and so that really hurt EDG. That being said, they still could have won the game, but they mispositioned a little bit, and when you have one of these heavy magic damage teams, any sort of mistake you make just sort of gets compounded because of how balance the types of damage on your team are so that's what went wrong for edg i think omg just got out rotated by edg in the early game they didn't respect the maokai gragas pick potential and they got really behind in mid game fights but they were able to bring it back from edg's throw at the end thanks for watching be sure to check out the rest of my videos at lowclass.com